about Diana. Previously, I poured this resin tabletop, and unfortunately, this project shifted from the commission work to my side project. So the table received my attention only after I was done with all the client work, shop maintenance, and procrastination. Anyhow, in the last episode of this build, I took it from the flatbed into my office simply because it was getting too cold in the workshop. But it caused a bit of a problem. The last third of the table uh, bent down because of the left inner stress in the slabs and epoxy haven't acquired its full strength by the time it was demolded. So I decided to make some uh, small relief cuts, put some weight on the end. Uh, to bend it back to the shape and fill those uh, cuts with epoxy. So honestly it didn't really work as I expected. The table sprang back once I removed the weight. But at least I was sure that the table will not move after I will finish it. So here you can see me rolling to my colleague's workshop. He owns a wonderful white belt sander. So this, this worked a treat and it helped a lot. And even with this machine it took like up to an hour to, to send it. Anyhow, once I was back to my workshop, I found some air pockets. So I scuffed the surface and mixed some uh, epoxy. And I was absolutely glad I dyed resin beforehand and left some for these kind of fixes. So with the machine, we sanded it up to 60 grit and all the lower grids was done by hand and I found some uh, teeny tiny bubbles so I filled those with the CA glue it's just quickest solution and you don't really see the difference in colors so at this point it was safe to cut all the edges and make the corners square and true. At this point I decided I want to make this uh, tabletop to look even lighter than it looks now. So I made really uh, shallow uh, bevel cuts from underneath but I did the procedure kind of wrong because the blade on the shaper was, uh, was getting pinched by those off cuts. As you can see, there's a lot of burns left. But it was really an easy fix from this point. I just took my battery planer, hooked it to the vacuum and planed the rest of the material. And since this is the underside of the table, so I use just five minute epoxy to fill all these open cracks. And this is the cool trick. Nothing new, but I just find it very useful when sanding the tabletops. I use the pencil to mark it in between the grids, so I'm sure I've done good sanding. I think I'm up to 120 grit at this point, so I decided to round the corners with the router. So with the lower grids, I will sand down all the marks left from the router. And once I reach 500 uh, grit, I stop sanding the wood and I carry on only with the epoxy and I wipe it off with a microfiber cloth really often it, it helps a bit 
but you have to switch the pads really really often and once I reach 2000 grit I switch to polishing I use uh, this stiffer foam polishing pad and 10 micron polishing paste once I was done with this I switch to softer pad and uh, 15 micron paste I was planning to use Rubio Monocoat for the wood so I figured it's a great opportunity to use this uh, Rubio cleaner to remove all the polishing compound residue I should have covered the wood between, before uh, polishing but it didn't really matter it, it worked out quite good and at this point I realized the table look lost its charm so I decided I want to put a matte lacquer and leave some uh, intricacy in the lake so it, it will look like frozen lake or something so here I'm at my colleague's workshop the same uh, where I sanded the tabletop and he's mixing some uh, two component lacquer and and the rest is self-explanatory so I closed the doors because I didn't want any dust to come in and the smell was ooh, really awful so that's all I have for this part I'm really pleased how it's looking it's so light and so charming but it's a bit flimsy so I will have to make some uh, apron and proper legs for it but I'm really pleased thank you for sticking with me and see you next time